Few Golden Age Hollywood starlets retain the respect and admiration of the public quite like Audrey Hepburn. The Belgian actress burst onto the scene with the Broadway adaptation of the novel Gigi after having been personally selected by the author of the novel to play its main character. Audrey then went on to star in a number of monumental Hollywood productions that solidified her place as an icon. Join Facts First as we take an intimate look at Audrey Hepburn's life and career. Audrey Hepburn was born in Brussels on May 4, 1929. Her mother was a Dutch baroness named Ella van Heemstra. During World War II, Audrey's mother changed her name to distract from the fact that she had British ancestry. Her father was similarly of British lineage, though he had left the family when Audrey was six. As a child, Audrey went on to attend boarding school in England. However, she spent the years of World War II in Holland, which was occupied by Nazi forces. Audrey's mother was initially a Nazi sympathizer, though she inevitably changed her views when Audrey's uncle was imprisoned and killed by the Third Reich. After this incident, Audrey and her mother sought refuge in a town nearby, and Audrey's mother gradually began to sympathize more and more with the resistance. As Audrey gradually became more capable, she was able to help out more and more in the resistance. Despite the fact that her family was starving to the point of having to eat tulip bulbs during the darkest days of the war, she still found it in herself to volunteer as a nurse at a hospital that had been set up to treat Allied soldiers wounded during battle. Audrey had been an avid student of ballet throughout her childhood and also put on dance recitals during World War II, the proceeds from which went to benefit the Dutch underground. The Dutch underground was part of the resistance movement against the Nazi occupation of the area, and Audrey also worked with them as a courier during the war. After the war ended, Audrey furthered her study of ballet and became a model. She worked as a model and studied ballet throughout Amsterdam and England before debuting on the London stage in 1948. This was in High Button Shoes, a musical. Though Audrey was a mere chorus girl, bigger and better things soon came. She made her film debut with an appearance in a 1951 movie called One Wild Oat. Though the appearance was uncredited, it marked Audrey's entrance into the industry. She subsequently performed in The Lavender Hill Mob that same year alongside Alec Guinness. Around this time period, Audrey met a French author named Colette, who happened to be the author of a novel that was about to be adapted into a hit Broadway play. That novel was Gigi, and Colette thought Audrey would be the perfect choice to play the titular role. Audrey was only 22 when she premiered in the Broadway hit Gigi, which had been adapted from the novel by French author Colette. The year was 1951, and Audrey became an instant sensation. Two years later, she won an Academy Award for her performance in the 1953 movie Roman Holiday. She starred in the film alongside Gregory Peck and played Princess Anne. Although Audrey had made her breakout turn on Broadway, she didn't stick around on the stage for very long after breaking out into film. Her last Broadway performance was in the 1954 production On Dean, which netted the actress a Tony. One of her co-stars in the play was an actor named Mel Ferrer, who later became Audrey's husband. The 1954 film Sabrina granted Audrey another memorable turn on the big screen, with the actress featuring alongside Humphrey Bogart and William Holden. While filming, Audrey and William became entangled in an affair that ended up destroying William's marriage. Audrey and William were all set to wed before Audrey found out William had undergone a vasectomy years previously. Audrey was a firm believer in having children and refused to marry a man who couldn't give her any. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. In 1957, another memorable starring turn came Audrey Hepburn's way when she got the opportunity to dance alongside legend Fred Astaire in the film Funny Face. The film included an appearance by Audrey's mother and her Yorkshire Terrier. Audrey then appeared alongside husband Mel Ferrer in a filmed version of the novel War and Peace. In 1959, she received acclaim for her dramatic performance in the film The Nun's Story. 1960 saw Audrey appear in the western Unforgiven, which was helmed by legendary director John Huston. Although she received a great deal of attention and acclaim, she went on to describe it as her least favorite production. A big part of her distasteful memories filming Unforgiven stemmed from an accident she had on the set while riding a horse. This accident not only saw the actress break her back, but also caused her to have a miscarriage. Audrey had given birth to first son Sean shortly before filming of the feature began and was pregnant with her second child during production. It would be several more years before Audrey ended up giving birth to a second child, Luca, in 1970. 
1961, she was given one of the most iconic roles of her career. This was in the feature film Breakfast at Tiffany's which was an adaptation of the Truman Capote novel of the same name. Truman Capote expressed public distaste for the fact that Audrey had been cast as Holly Golightly. Apparently, he had wanted Marilyn Monroe. Although Truman Capote believed Audrey Hepburn wasn't appropriate to play the role, the actress ended up making the part her own. Audrey remains arguably best known for her performance as Holly Golightly, and it's hard to imagine Marilyn Monroe would have had the same impact on audiences. One of her iconic scenes during the film sees her performing the song Moon River, which was written for her by composer Henry Mancini. If that role wasn't her most iconic, then that honor would instead go to her performance in the 1964 film My Fair Lady. She was cast in the part of Eliza Doolittle after Julie Andrews had performed the part to great acclaim on Broadway. Despite the fact that many were saddened by Julie Andrews' absence, Audrey received great acclaim for her performance. To her chagrin, her singing in the Hollywood adaptation of My Fair Lady was dubbed over by a more professional singer. According to Audrey, she wouldn't have taken the part if she'd known this would be the case. Hepburn subsequently earned her fifth Academy Award nomination acting as a blind woman in the unique thriller Wait Until Dark. The film followed Audrey's blind character being stalked throughout her apartment by multiple silent assailants, with one of them being played by character actor Alan Arkin. Audrey ended up divorcing Mel Ferrer in 1968 and remarried the next year to a man named Andrea Doty. They remained married from 1969 to 82. In 1980, before divorcing him, Audrey became romantically involved with Dutch actor Robert Walters. The two remained romantic partners until Audrey's death many years later. During her later years, Audrey revitalized the humanistic spark she had shown during World War II by working with UNICEF. Starting in 1989, Audrey made several important trips while working as a goodwill ambassador for the organization. Some of these trips even put the legendary actress into some dangerous situations in foreign countries, though she felt the humanitarian effort was worth it. Her last mission with UNICEF saw her going to Somalia in 1992, and she began complaining about stomach pains during the trip. When she returned, she was diagnosed with cancer. She subsequently died in early 93. Before her death, Audrey was granted a Presidential Medal of Freedom by President George Bush, though she was too ill to attend the celebration. She passed away January 20th at age 63. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below to share what your favorite role of Audrey Hepburn's was. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.